Oh, his lovely and talented Andrea Kay and uh, my good friend, Mr. Urban Miaris. And we have our next segment, if we can get everybody to stop taking pictures for all the social media, but we'll we'll get it going anyway. Never. I can multitask, baby. Yeah, we so, like pictures. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We're girls. <laughs> We have an in-house paparazzi. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. So welcome, Alexandra German uh, from uh, Coldwell Banker, who's here for our Women in Business segment. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me on the show t- today, tonight. So, and so what's what's new in Alexandra's world? Um, my world is great. I uh, just closed the... Uh, Really good transaction <gasps> yesterday. Yay! Yes. Yay! Congrats! <laughs> you do me business, girl. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> good for you. Thank you. So everything is everything is great. You know the the doing the show. It's the outlet for me, and uh, I love doing that. Good. Um, always good to see you guys, and uh, always great to meet great people that you have on the show and invite. Yeah, Some great people. Well, in, show. Yeah, yeah, in fact, um, last week you had a great guest on, and she had two tips uh, that I've, or one tip basically that I've been implementing. I want her Allison to know that every morning I write what I expect good to happen that day, and I'm very specific. And at the end of the day, I'm doing my daily brag, Barry. Your daily brag. Doing my daily brag. Okay. You're good Guys to- can do that too. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, I you know I keep forgetting to do all these things, so I need to. I need to remind the service or something. <laughs> well, you're welcome to come on every week and do your daily and do your weekly brag here on the show. So That's anyway, right. you know how, fortu- how fortunate we are. Where, wherever I travel, and people say, "Where are you from?" I say, "San Diego." Yeah. I say, oh, I'd love to live there. Mm-hmm. Be- you know, it's just oh. it's beautiful. So fortunate. So um, I would like to introduce our Please guest uh, tonight. It's uh, Leslie Katie with Pachamama Alliance. And um, Pachamama was founded by um, by a lady that wrote one of the most famous books in this century. And I've took a lot of economic seminars about business, and uh, she wrote the book that changed a, th- a lot of um, people's thinking about money. She wrote, she wrote the book, The Soul of Money. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, and um, the. This organization was founded by John Perkins, who wrote Confessions of an Economic Hitman, Lynn Twist, The Soul of Money, and uh, Lynn's husband, Bill, Bill Twist. Um, I want I want you to welcome Leslie Katie, and uh, she can tell us more about it. it yeah. Tell us, tell us all about uh, Pachamama and, and what you do and, and uh, what, what it's all about. Thanks. Um, Pachamama Alliance was founded, as um, uh, Alex said, uh, in 1997 by Lynn, Bill, Twist, and um, John Perkins. And it was actually founded out of a trip that Lynn had done when she met with the indigenous people in the Amazon region of the rainforest. Wow. There was something that was transformative in her meeting with them that changed her life's work forever. And uh, it's out of that that she, John, and her husband founded Pachamama Alliance. And there are two aspects to their work. Uh One is um, working with shoulder to shoulder with the people of the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador, um, helping them preserve their lands, the rainforest itself, and their culture. And the second part, what they said to her when she founded this and and really had this deep conversation with them was, you can go ahead and help us, you know, help us preserve our lands, but they won't be preserved forever unless you work with the people, your people, the Mm -hmm. people of the industrialized culture. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're a dream culture, these people are. And they said basically to her that she needed to change the dream of her people. Mm. And so it's through that that she developed these programs, or the Pachamama Alliance was founded, and developed these programs to actually change that dream. And uh, that's a little bit of the stories we'll go into today about how that works. But we have educational programs that are conducted over 70 countries in the world, Mm. over 10 languages, and uh, that's been going on for the last 10 years or so. Where did the name Pachamama come from? Good question. Pachamama is actually um, a Quechua. It's a it's a word from the, an indigenous language, uh, Quechua, and also um, another another one. But it, it's loosely translated as Mother Earth. Mm. But it's actually more than that. Kind of the more literal translation is World 
mother. Ah. And uh, that includes, you know, the the, the galaxies, um, all of manifest uh, the world and the energies that um, that comprise it and support it. You know, what's cool about this organization is that people like Leslie could go to Amazon rainforest and they can stay with um, indigenous people. So Leslie went a few years ago and uh, she shared with me a few stories that I would love it if you shared them on the air because we can learn a lot from these people too. Yeah, so part of the um, education that's done is to actually take, you know, we we are really good at what we do. And some of what we do is actually leading to a non-sustainable future for all of us. So a part of this whole thing is that there's these indigenous people who have been living in harmony and understanding that they are, um, they're integral and they're a part of the natural environment. And we've kind of lost some of that. So a part of this is to bring some of that indigenous wisdom back into the way that we do things and have that inform our own decisions and the way that we do our business, our lives, that kind of thing. So I want to go into the one story that I had shared with Alex that she was so excited I share. Um, And it's pertinent to the women in business. So um, as she said, I've been down there and we get to stay, we fly in, the the Amazon is just a, a very lush, rich, vibrant place. And they actually, to get a plane in and out of there, they have to carve out a strip, right? a strip, strip. out of the forest. So you come, you're following rivers, you're seeing just the all just full wow. uh, forest. And then this little strip, <laughs> this small little strip that's just grass and dirt. And the plane has to dip down below the trees to, to come in, you know, a five-person plane. A little scary there. Quite but, mm. exciting. Mm-hmm. I had full trust because they yes. go in and out and they right. know to do that. I think so you I have had, to have full trust. Yes, yeah. I had to have full trust. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to enjoy the whole thing, right? Right. Um, and we were greeted by the people and we came in. And we were there with them. Actually, I stayed on the one trip that I did a little over two years ago. I we actually had the opportunity to stay with two different tribes. So I did this landing and takeoff twice. Oh, wow. um, In two different parts of the rainforest. But during our time together, there was a point, and there were men and women who had come from, you know, our culture. Um, On one day, they separated out the men and the women. And so the women were talking with the women, and the men went off and did their man things. Mm-hmm. Um, Beat so, their chest, yeah. smoked cigars, you know, yeah, typical they, guy stuff. I think they and did drink scotch. That? Yeah. You uh-huh. that. Actually, <laughs> hey, I'm with the ladies. So they watched good. baseball. You know. I think they did do some of that stuff, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think they shot darts and uh, <laughs> arrows, and they did smoke, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't tell us all their secrets. But anyway... Well, we stayed with the women, and the women um, had these incredible stories. And one of the things that was really touching to me is the way that they told us some of their um, their long stories. They actually sang them, oh. um, and it was it was beautiful. And we had a translator, of course. But the thing I wanted to talk to about with um, with women is that th- this is I'm flashing forward to a month ago or two months ago. I went to a women's conference. And it was run by um, a woman who works with women in business to assist them with having very successful businesses. And not just successful businesses in the traditional way, but also incorporating more of the feminine mm. in, mm-hmm. in their business. Um, and she went also around the same time that I did. And when those Amazonian women were sitting with her, and it was of um, the... Uh, they they found out who she was and that she had was working with women that she was a a leader of women and women in business and she'd also found out that those women and she had contributed a lot of money to the organization that was in fact helping them and they they described how they're basically pretty delineated in terms of what the masculine and the men do and the women the men they said they go out They have to chop down parts of the forest so we can come and go to make our homes, to do these different things. They have to kill the animals. And there's very a destructive kind of focused thing that they need to do, and that's necessary. Mm -hmm. The women, she said, it's more uh, life-preserving. And she said, you know, we, we we have the children and look after them. We plant 
uh, the plants and tend to the gardens. We make the chicha, which is the drink that they drink that sustains the whole community. And she said, so this is more kind of life enhancing and life affirming and, and holding. And both of those things are important. Mm-hmm. She said, but there's one other role that the women take that's very and just as important. She says, the women tell the men when to stop. Oh. I'm not sure I like that part. <laughs> you have my attention, okay. Leslie. So she and Mary. So, yeah. so she looked at this woman business leader and said, why have your women not told the men to stop? Mm. And Interesting. Now, this can be looked at as, okay, women need to do that. No, it's a masculine-feminine thing. Because right? men need to be willing to hear the word stop. Well, and it's not just men, right? Mm-hmm. It's that part of us in our culture. It could be within us as an individual, mm-hmm. you know, the masculine-feminine balance, or in us as a culture, the masculine-feminine balance. Mm-hmm. And so when we're out of balance which we are Mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. culture, if we are destroying our own home, Mm. right? Interesting. Then we're out of balance. And we have gender lines being blurred as part of our culture, which I think affects that as well. Yeah. Well, look at Baltimore. You remember what was happening. Mm -hmm. And do you remember that mother of a teenager boy? Yeah. Yeah slapped him on the head a few times and she told him to stop. Yeah. So sometimes I she think... She put a stop right on his head. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, so I, think men, I think men are wonderful and you know, they go and they conquer and... They're hunter-gatherers. But, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but sometimes they don't know when to stop. Right. And we need to tell them when to stop. Well, and, I, and again, I don't think it's just male-female. Mm-hmm. We're not talking male-female here. We're talking about that aspect of us as human beings where we are, there's a part of us that needs to sustain and say yes, mm-hmm. right, and take in and collaborate. And grow. There's, and grow. There's this other part of us that needs to um, go ahead and be single-focused, and to, you know, and to go ahead charge and, and, and charge forward. Right. So there needs to be a balance between the two. And so I think it's not so much male, female. Gotcha. It's more masculine, feminine. Mm-hmm. There's another, if we have, do we have time for another little story? Yep. Um, you're listening to Close Up on San Diego Business here on KCBQ, streaming live at am1170theanswer.com. Give us a tweet at Close Up SD, email me at Barry at com, or find our page on Facebook. We want to hear from you. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, here with Andrea K. Urban Miaris, Alexandra German, and Leslie. <clears throat> Katie, so um, we we do have time for one more story. I also want you to tell me a little bit about how you're funded and how we can help with with uh, let's say the sustainability of your organization. Great, um, we are a nonprofit five five hundred one c three, and um, donations are taken directly. If people would like to just even go on the website at pachamama dot org. Where does most of your funding come from now? It comes from private sources. Okay. Uh, individuals and individuals uh, mm-hmm. yes so um, uh, and again it, it just supports the programs and also supports the the um, the work in the Ecuador preserving the rainforest and so the does the money uh, that's donated to you go towards helping the people or preserving the Amazon what where, where does it primarily go towards? Well, this the work in the Amazon, they have their own associations. So there are many different tribes that are there. Um, Pachamama started out working with one tribe, um, and then it's branched off to working with all of the local indigenous tribes. So what they do is they have their own associations. Each tribe has leadership and each of those tribes get together in an indigenous association. So there's, you know, they they actually have legal costs to try and uh, wage some of this this work that they do. What's very interesting in Ecuador is that just several years ago, in their constitution, they gave nature rights in their constitution. Wow, interesting. Yeah, I know micro lending is uh, big in that area. Uh, and usually twenty five fifty dollars what it could do just buying a sewing machine is an example 
a, a foot pedal sewing machine or so. It's truly amazing. Uh, and the women are the prim- primary entrepreneurs. Yeah. 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 Well, we are running short on time. Tell our listeners how they find out more about Pachamama. Okay. The local the local group is on Facebook and on Meetup, just Pachamama San Diego. If you go on there and go ahead and join, we have all of our uh, local events um, and uh, and programs available okay. on there. And Pachamama.org, they can go ahead and register there, and they'll get all kinds of information from the uh, national um, national group. Great. And, and that's uh, spelled P-A-C-H-A-M-A-M-A, correct? Correct. Great. Well, Leslie, thanks for being with us. Um, we want to we wanna follow up and, and see what we can do to help you out as things go on, and, and I think this is wonderful. Thank you very much for having me. Great. This is Close Up on San Diego Business here on KCBQ, streaming live at am1170theanswer.com. Send us a tweet at CloseUpSD or just find our page on Facebook. You can always email me at Barry at CloseUpSanDiego.com. Let me know what you think. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hey, hey.